Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Core Studio. Welcome to the show. Okay, Duskborn, spoiler season, week two, day one. I think that's the math there. Uh, this next card that I'm going to be talking about needs no math, though, because it is Doge. Enduring Courage, oh my goodness. You don't have to do any calculations to determine that this is... One of the brand new best boys of all time. This is just such a cool card. I'm so glad they made it. A 3-3 Dog Glimmer for four mana in red. Whenever another creature you control enters, it gets plus two plus zero and gains haste until end of turn. On top of that, this better never happen. Other players out there, don't you dare hurt my dog or John Wick is coming after you. But if Incur Ender Encourage dies, um, if it was a creature, you come back uh, as, a as an enchantment. So uh, so it's going to stay in play anyways. Basically, what we're going to be having here is Ogre Bat Battle Driver, but like much more adorable, number one, and much better, number two. Because again, this is basically um, Ogre Battle Driver that is much more hard to deal with because you get it in play, and then it's dealt with, and it they better not deal with it because again, John Wick, consequences, right? But then if they do deal with it, it comes right back as an enchantment, which in my opinion is probably the hardest type of permanent to deal with in Commander, or I should say like the least amount of removal go towards that one compared to like Wrath of God, destroying creatures, or just swinging at a planeswalker. Yeah, that's not tough at all when you've got three opponents. Or yeah, artifacts, Vandal Blast, that thing too. So this I think is going to be great for aggressive decks out there. Again, it's a temporary pump, but it is a big pump and haste is massive. I mean... This is basically one extra mana from Fervor, which sees a ton of play again in Shaman for two and a red that just gives your creatures haste. This is Fervor, but also a 3-3, but also a plus machine. Again, plus two, plus zero. And again, when it dies, it comes right back as an enchantment love it it's amazing enchantress text as well enduring courage bestest boy moving on not quite the bestest boy in fact um uh, the opposite i guess uh withering torment an instant for three mana in black destroy target creature enchantment you lose two life interesting that we are getting just straight up destroy enchantment without i mean you we have uh, i guess more recently gotten one you know but that one's like losing based off of what is it again mana value this one is a set amount of loss so yeah, this one could definitely see play. Black historically has been very bad at dealing with well artifacts and enchantments. And there you go. There's another black removal for an enchantment. So if you're in mono black and you're, you know, your friend over there has got an enchanter stack and you're like, no, not this time. I shall demolish you. This is a card you're going to add. Moving on. Optimistic Scavenger. A 1-1 human scout for a single white mana. Uh, can I just say this really quick? Every single time I see a 1-1 one, one for 1 in white, now I just assume it's going to be yet another, like, 1-1 one, one when it dies, you make a 1-1. One, one. Because we're getting quite a few of those, but yeah, it's not. Whenever an enchantment you control enters, and whenever you fully unlock a room, put a counter on target creature. There's got to be some kind of a combo here, right? I mean, Scurry Oak plus, uh, what's the chance at evening, I guess, would do it. Probably, right? Ah, oh, no, you got to have a, yeah, maybe, yeah. Anyways. There's got to be some kind of a combo here where enchantment comes into play, you know, you get a counter on, you know, that kind of thing. It makes creature, that kind of thing, too. You can enchantment creature. That being said, outside of, like, any kind of combos, uh, this is more of a specific kind of card because, like, you're kind of in between, like, enchantress and also, like, counters for what really matters. Like, do you care enough about getting counters on things if you're just doing enchantress? Maybe if you've got, say, like, a Voltron-ish commander thing. It seems pretty specific, but maybe a deck out there would really want it. Or again, combo. Moving on. Gremlin Tamer. And again, my apologies. Some of these cards are a little blurry. Not sure exactly why. 2-2. Two, two, human Scout for two mana in Azorius. Eerie. Whenever an enchantment you control enters, and whenever you fully unlock a room, create a 1-1 one, one red Gremlin creature token. Yeah, that's actually really good. Again, when it comes to Enchantress-style decks, this is, I mean, you can just ignore the fully unlock room. I think some players are going to get tripped up on that, like... If you don't have rooms in your deck, that's okay. It does not matter. If you're an enchanter stack, you've got a million enchantments. That's really all that matters. And so essentially, it's just basically Constellation. In Constellation, make a 1-1 one, one that if for a low-to-the-ground creature like this, that's quite good. I mean, there's that, like, Pegasus, you know, at four, or Archon that makes Pegasus at four mana or whatnot. There are two, two flyers, or they have lifelink or whatever, or both, I believe. But yeah, this is lower to the ground. The thing is, again, with Enchanter style decks, you kind of have to manage the amount of non enchantments. And unfortunately, this is not an enchantment creature, Human Scout. If it was, yeah, slam it into your Enchanter stack. But because it's not, 
you kind of have to pick and choose like okay does my enchantress deck really care about going wide so much that like i really want this if so great it's also kind of funny that you've got an azorius creature making red one ones anyways moving on root wise survivor three four human scout with haste for five mana in green Beginning of your second main phase. If it's tapped, put three counters up to one target land you control. That land becomes a 0-0. Zero, zero. This other types gains haste till the next turn. Probably not going to see in many commander play in commander decks out there because, well, number one, like I mentioned with all these like survival creatures, like sending your creature into danger to like hopefully have it tapped is usually not, not what you want to be forced to do to actually get the value if you really want that value. And also turning your lands into creatures is usually not what most decks want to do because um, board wipes. Wrath of God, you lose your lands. Ramp is sacred. Moving on! Veteran Survivor, a 2 on Human Survivor for a single white mana. At the end of your second main phase, if it's tapped, exile to one tar card from a graveyard. As long as there are three more cards, exile with it gets plus three, plus three, and has hexproof. That's quite nice. I mean, this can become quite big quite quickly. Uh, again, like, if you can get it out early, cool. But, like, there might not be things in graveyards then, too. So, there you go. And actually, with some of these cards, I realized that some of these actually came out, like, a long time ago like on the first day of spoiler season i believe that being said it was a crazy day i got one episode out really quickly just on the first like major cards so i'm coming back to them now so uh my apologies if you're seeing something you've already seen and you might be like me and you'll be like oh wait i, I kind of missed those cool moving on valgavos lair an enchantment land which is quite interesting hexproof enters tap as it enters choose a color tap at one man of the chosen color keep in mind austere command will destroy this so kind of like your artifact lands not the indestructible ones. Eh, yeah, it's susceptible to that. That being said, a land with Hexproof is quite interesting. The fact that it is enchantment is interesting as well. There's definitely some, uh, again, like Enchantress style, like not like when you cast enchantment, because you're not casting this, but like Eidolon Blossoms. Enchantment enters draw a card, so you're just playing a land, you get, it gets to enter draw a card. It's quite nice. If this is budget friendly, I might just slam dunk this into my Garth deck, probably, because it does have hexproof. It's hard to deal with. My Garth deck is like, hey, let's enchant one land a ton. That being said, also the fact that it's enchantment again makes it removal to like, you know, like enchantment board wipes, you know, like an austere command. Moving on. Unwanted remake. Instant for a single white mana. Destroy target creature controller manifest dread kind of like a different like path to exile ish 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 again it is not exiling so it doesn't get around indestructibility regeneration etc etc does destroy for one mana though that's pretty amazing manifest dread that's quite nice just being able to say like okay you're getting a 2-2 in replace of that it's probably gonna be something worse even if you do flip it over at a certain point and putting some of your graveyard as well so another good low to ground removal is it better than swords is it better than path no and no but like or is anything ever going to be i mean maybe in like five years i'll be eating my words and it's like my goodness the new path because wizards and power creep whoa but yeah for now it's still a good card again great low to ground removal you can't complain next up split up sorcery for three mana choose one so all tapped creatures all untapped creatures interesting with these kind of like very specific board wipes i usually not that i don't find them to be better in practice but like you kind of need a deck that really works well with this you can't just be like okay it's gonna work out all right all the creatures that i want to be destroyed are going to be tapped all the ones i don't want to be destroyed are going to be untapped you kind of need a way to be like okay i can force all my creatures to be tapped maybe or my my opponent's creatures to be tapped yeah, that one is Orius Commander. That's all about tapping your phone's creatures. That one. So those kinds of commanders that like in kinds of deck strategies that are like, you know that you can actually tap down your phone's creatures or force them to be untapped. Make sure you're getting the most out of this, okay? Don't just throw it into a deck and be like, it's going to work out because you're going to be a situation like, well, oh no, I'm going to be destroying, uh oh, half my creatures, but half of their creatures. Is it worth it? I don't know. Who knows? Moving on. Scrabbling Skullcrab. Cute. Not really. Zero, 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 zero. It's just dead when it comes to play. Zero, three, Crab Skeleton for a single blue mana. Eerie. Jam, you control, enters. Whenever you fall in like a room, target player mills two cards. Uh, again, there's probably some weird combo that you can do with an Enchantress style deck with this one. I mean, like, if you want like a mill condition potentially for an enchantress deck that's going to take quite a while again it is target player milling two more likely you might just have like a deck where you actually maybe want to mill yourself potentially like i could see in like a weird way like moldrofa might want to consider this one where you're like okay like i can keep playing this enchantment sacrificing it playing it sacrificing it like throughout the game and all of a sudden you know building up more cards in my graveyard by self milling again it says target player not target opponent so keep that in mind next up razorkin needlehead 
Creepy. 2-2, two, two, human assassin for two mana in red. Has first strike during your turn. Whenever an opponent draws a card, one damage to them. That's quite good, obviously. I mean, like, cool. It's got first strike in your turn for a 2-2. Two, two. I mean, like, just that's nothing to write home about in Commander. But what is to write home about is, hey, um, yeah, opponents, we're drawing cards. You know, like, if I force you to wheel, then you're going to lose. So, yeah, any of those kind of decks that really care about, well, like, Underworld Dreams style kind of things. Uh, yeah. Definitely another card to throw in those decks to punish your opponents for drawing cards and also, again, force them to draw with wheels. Next up, Peer Past the Veil. Instant for four mana in Gruel. Discard your hand and draw X cards or X the number of card types from cards in your graveyard. This is interesting. This is specific. This is potentially risky. So, again, when you are utilizing a card like this, like the potential of it is quite large. I mean, how many different card types do we have these days? Like eight? nine i don't know a lot we have a lot these days right i mean you just got battles and that kind of stuff too so all of a sudden you cast this for four mana you discard your hand you draw like eight cards amazing amazing upside there's also times where like your early game and you're like oh okay well i've got some things in my hand that i that i want but some things i don't want like i'd like to draw some and like okay i've only got like three different card types in my hand like oh okay um oh and i got nothing else in my graveyard it's so, like do i play this to try to like reset to like maybe hopefully draw into something so there is that risk to it and again like if your graver gets dealt with and you don't have a hand this just does nothing so there is risk to it there's also a big amount of upside to it as well if you do have kind of like a deck that again maybe fills the graveyard quite easily wheels a lot that kind of stuff as well you can probably more consistently get more things in there it is like not just super focused just on one kind of card type moving on Overlord of the Mistmores, a 6-6 six, six avatar that is impending for for four mana. Basically, it's kind of like a weird kind of suspendish. Uh, cast for its spending cost, enters with four time counters on it. Isn't a creature to the last one's room. Like, suspend Eryxmethes is what I say with this, usually. Get of your end step, ruin time counter from it. Cost seven mana, though, if you wouldn't want to do that. Whenever it enters or attacks, create two, two, one white inside creature tokens with flying. That's quite nice. Uh, keep in mind that this does not have flying itself. That being said, yeah, you can uh, fill the board quite quickly with this. It's kind of like Grave Titan-esque, but again, with evasive creatures instead of zombies. Less relevant creature type being insect, though relevant for certain decks, but usually not in white too. So that's interesting as well. But yeah, it's a really interesting card. It can definitely be powerful. It can definitely be a powerhouse if you get it going. And especially since you are in white, you can blink it quite easily. So just keep blinking it again and again and again and again and, again, and all of a sudden have a giant army of flyers. Moving on. Hotwood Shrieker, a 3-3, Beast Mutant for 3 mana in green, attacks Manifest Dread, pay 1 in a green, reveal target, face down permanent, if it's a creature card you may turn it face up, cool, I mean, a use and abuse face down things, Eddie, another card for your face down tribal deck, moving on, Fear of Immobility, a 4-4 four, four enchant creature, Nightmare for 5 mana in white, enters tap up to one target creature, but an opponent controls that creature, put a stun counter on it, so yeah, stun down a creature, that's quite nice when it comes to like, are you going to actually utilize this? Probably not for Commander. Like, there's a lot better, you know, uh, removal type, you know, ETBs when it comes to creatures and blink decks. But uh, maybe for like an Enchantress blink deck, I don't know, because it gets both. Cool. Anyways, or like if you have Proliferate as well, obviously you can use Imbues that Sun Counter even more. Next up, Fear of Lost Teeth. Yeah, everyone's had that dream, right? 1-1, one, one, Enchantment Creature Nightmare for a single black mana. When it dies, it deals one of your target, you gain one life. Limited card. Next up, Enduring in Enduring Innocence. A 2-1 Sheep Glimmer with Lifelink that's adorable for 3 mana in white. Whenever one or more other creatures you control a power to less enter, draw a card. Wizards with the limiting. This ability triggers only once each turn, of course. When it dies, again like it's a glimmer, it comes back into play. So, yeah, I mean, if you are in a low power creature deck, uh, this is about as good as you can do in white where it's like, yeah, you draw once. Versus in green, it's like, hey, you have big power creature? Draw every time. <laughs> green, stompy, stompy, stompy. Yeah, like Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, no, um, not that. But anyways, what this is, is a great draw engine for you, especially if you have, or I guess I would say, more so if you have ways to get creatures into play that have power two or less on your opponent's turns as well. Might trigger only once each turn, but again, it counts your opponent's turn, so if you've got ways to make creature tokens on their turn, say, or ways to blink your creatures on their turn, or whatnot, if you've got ways to get creatures in play on not just your turn, this is a slam dunk, absolutely. If not, it's still decent, obviously, it's still draw, but you've got more potential draw with a lot of other things. Next up, 
We've got Dollmaker's Shop slash Porcelain Gallery. Dollmaker's Shop, whenever one or more non-toy creatures you control attack a player. Create a 1-1 one, one white toy artifact creature token. Interesting. So yeah, you can definitely make a lot of creatures pretty quickly with this throughout the game. And then it does say one or more, though. Keep in mind. So you're still only getting one for each turn. But still, throughout the game, you'll get more and more. Creature control, a base power, toughness, each equal to the number of creatures you control. That is quite nice. I mean, again, for the right deck out there, you're not going to just throw us in any deck because if you've got big creatures already, you could, like, potentially make them smaller, obviously. Be like, oh, no. I only have two creatures in play. That's not helpful. But again, if you have a go-wide strategy, this can be an amazing, an amazing, basically, like, anthem because it does adjust base power and toughness. So, yeah, if you've got a bunch of 1-1s, one but you have 10 of them, congratulations, they're all 10-10s. Ten so, the wider you go, the harder you hit, kind of like Jet Mirror-ish, can definitely be a great finisher for you. Next up, Disturbing Mirth. An enchantment for two mana in Rakdos. When it enters, you may sacrifice another enchantment or creature. If you do draw two cards, I'm distracted by this art. That is just disgusting. Uh, when you sacrifice during Mirth, it manifests dread. So there you go. Being able to draw two cards uh, when you, you know, have it enter and sacrifice something, great. When you sacrifice this somehow, you get to manifest dread. So yeah, if you've got a deck that can sacrifice a bunch of things, cool. Uh, if you don't, don't play this. Cool. Next up, Demonic Council. Sorcery for two mana in black. Search life for a demon card. Be able to put your hand, then shuffle. Delirium, but there are four or more card types of cards. You're great, but search your life for any card, put your hand, then shuffle. I mean, this is potential to be Demonic Tutor, obviously. If you do have that Delirium, it does take, you know, a little bit of build around or for the right deck to actually have it. You can just be like, okay, every time I cast this, it's going to be that. It's like, no, it depends on the deck, really. Like, if you don't have, you know, ways to get things in your graveyard quickly, then you're probably not going to get there when you need it, maybe. Anyways. Uh, if you have a demon tribal deck, slam dunk, obviously, because it's just go get whatever demon you want. And also, in a very weird way as well, hey, are you playing like a changeling deck or a deck built around like mere entity or something like that? Cool. Go tutor for that because it's a demon technically as well. So do keep that in mind. Yeah, I mean, a self mill deck could consider this one as well. Uh, and a kind of a deck that can fill its graveyard quite easily, quite quickly. And of course, decks that, you know, revolve around demon cards. Next up, Cursed Recording. Scary. Artifact for four in red. Whenever you cast an insert short spell, put a time counter on it. Then if there are seven more time counters on it, remove those counters, deals 20 damage to you. Oh no. Tap when you next cast it's a short spell. This turn copy it's still to the copy. I mean, you probably need ways to like slow things down a bit on this one. Maybe reset it. Unless you really want it to deal 20 damage to you. Which could be a quite funny way to just take yourself out. I mean. Maybe you do that twice in Commander, but there you go, which is not hard to do. But yeah, being able to just say like, hey, okay, tap this, copy it. Yeah, you can do some pretty brutal things with that. So, and again, it is only on cast. So yeah, there are definitely ways to probably go infinite with this as well. So have fun with that. But yeah, be careful because obviously getting those counters on it, can, that could end up hurting you if you end up you know, not utilizing this properly. Next up, Doomsday Excruciator. I believe Eddie's actually making a deck around this one. Here we go. Black, 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 black. Six black mana pips for a six, six flying demon. Six, six, six. Yeah, the mark of the beast. That makes sense. But it's not a beast. It's a demon. There you go. When it enters, if it was cast, each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of the library face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card. So this is pretty spicy. It's kind of like, it's definitely a callback, obviously, to Doomsday. It works slightly differently in that, like, you're not just getting, you know, whatever five, I think Doomsday, isn't it five cards? Whatever five cards you want out of your graveyard and your library, and then it's your library, and then there you go. No, this affects everyone. It's you know random, essentially, as to what uh, people have left in their decks, though, because it's the bottom six cards. It is face down, so again, people can't look at those cards, which I find to be kind of weird. Anyways, that's just the thing. Uh, but also, it is making things a bit quicker for you, again, because you're up, keep you draw cards. So that's obviously a good thing that you have more resources, a bad thing in that you're going to lose quicker, because you're going to have no cards and lose eventually. So yeah, it's a very interesting workaround card. I'm glad it's like an enters has to be cast, though. There are some weird shenanigans that you could do this one if not. Next up, Screaming Nemesis. That would be absolutely obnoxious if you had just a nemesis that followed you around and just screamed. That'd be absolutely obnoxious. A 3-3. Three, three. Spirit with Ace for 3 mana in red. Whenever it's dealt damage, deals that much damage to any other target. If a player is dealt damage this way, they can't gain life for the rest of the game. That's brutal. That's hilarious. That's amazing. Uh, give this thing indestructible. There probably are some combos that you can do with it. That would be like, you know, dishing damage to something else, dishing it back, dishing damage to something else, dishing it back. You need like another like Boros Reckoner type card, which I guess could just go infinite on its own with indestructibility and lifelink or whatnot. 
That being said, this is just quite funny that you can just deal damage to players and all of a sudden they can't gain life for the rest of the game. So yeah, definitely a group slug type strategy can consider this one. All you need is like one little ping essentially that keeps pinging this and then you just hit each player with it and all of a sudden they can't gain life. You shut them down from that. And also if someone casts Blasphemous Act, have fun dishing out all the damage. Moving on, come back wrong. Source for three mana, Evil Dead reference, no? Three mana and black sword target creature, a creature card, put a grave this way, return to the battlefield, under control, sacrifice to be a next end step. This is interesting in that it's like, again, black kind of gets like theft in a way, but in a weird way. It's like, okay, I destroy a creature and I steal it. It's really funny how far magic's come where it's like, again, sorcery speed, yes, but like murder's like, okay, destroy a creature. And this is like, destroy a creature, but steal it temporarily. So again, it does come back under control. Sacrifice beginning of your next end step. So yeah, I mean, this is absolutely amazing with anything that has like a great ETB, LTB, or kind of like trigger or an ability that you want to use that you can use. Keep in mind, again, I don't believe it's giving haste, right? If a creature card for the grave this way, return to the battlefield under your control, sacrifice beginning of your next end step. Since it's sorcery speed, unless you can flash this in, you're not going to be able to attack with that creature unless you got a way to grant haste or utilize a tap ability. Do keep that in mind. So very, very good. Next up. Okay, this is one of the cards that I did go over in the very first episode. Valgavolf, the Terror Eater. Very cool. Okay, but what I didn't do and what I want to do is talk about some cards that work really well with this in a quick take. So at the end of this episode, that's what I'm going to be doing. Really quick, just as a recap, it's a 9-9 Elder Demon for 9 mana and black. Flying lifelink ward, sacrifice 3 non-land permanents because wizards slows ward on things. If a card you didn't control put in a graveyard, it pumps graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. During your turn, you may play cards, exile with it. You cast a spell sway, pay life, build its mana value, rather than pay its mana cost. Basically, steal your opponent's things, cast them for free. Yeah, I mean, steal your opponent's things that you either had them mill or they milled, or, you know, again, they just put in their graveyard by playing them, or if you, you know, destroy them or force them to sacrifice them. It's kind of like a weird, much more fair version of Turgrid, because Turgrid's five mana for some reason. Also counts, like, I mean, counts discard too, but you also just get the things for free. You also have to pay for these things, you know, Turgrid. Uh, but yeah, being able to actually play things, I guess with this, you can actually play all the cards still. Anyways, this is a quite a fun commander. Let's start with some cards that work well with it. So, first up, yeah, this is a nine mana commander. We need mana. So, throw all the mana rocks you can into this deck. I mean, just kidding for all of them, but throw all the efficient mana rocks that you can into this stack because you need to get your commander out to actually do anything with this kind of a strategy when you're just like, okay, I'll build in like some mill. Uh, okay, cool. Well, well, how are you going to win? You going to mill your pawns out? No. Okay, well, you need your commander to get the value then. Yes. So yeah, mill. So you need to actually, again, ramp efficiently, ramp effectively, Dream Sun, Hedron, cost six, tabs for three. That's great. Also, Carrick, son of Yogmoth. I don't know how to say it. Crick? Carrick? I don't know. 2-2, two, two. that costs 7 mana, but basically costs 4 plus 6 life. You basically turn every single one of your black pips into Phyrexian mana, so therefore you can just pay 2 life instead. So yeah, that helps your commander just cost 6 instead of 9, which is quite a difference. Life length for each black and mana cost. Again, I just kind of said that black mana pips. But whenever you cast a black spell, you get a counter on this, so it can keep growing throughout the game, and you can actually gain a good amount of life back with this as well. So keep in mind that does help with your commander as well. A Curse Marauder. This is going to be crucial. Yeah, you need to control the board before you get your commander out. But also, uh, hey, once your commander's out, like, cool. ETB, everyone sacrifice a non-token creature. I'm going to sacrifice a Curse Marauder. Good for me. That cost me two mana. Oh, all of you have got to sacrifice things. Oh, no. I get to exile them, and then I can cast them for life instead of paying for them. Thank you. Font of Agonies, take advantage of paying life. Enchantment for a single black mana. Wherever you pay life with that many blood counters on it, Pay two mana, essentially remove four blood counters from it to sort our creature, which then allows you to then pay more life to cast that thing, and then do it again, and again, and again. Steal the board while losing a bunch of life. Have fun. Ghoul Collar's Bell. Very simple, very effective. One mana artifact. Tap each player mills one. This might seem very, 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 very simple, but it is still very, very good with this commander. You know, just you hit certain things off the top of your opponent's library, like, oh, that's mine now. Oh, that's mine now. Cool, that's mine. Awesome. I just get to keep doing that. So repeatable mill effects can be great for you. Great Merch of Asphodel, an amazing card. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life or extra motion of black. You gain life, you lost this way. You're going to be gaining a lot of life with this. I mean, even with just this plus your commander, that's five black pips, right? That is 15 life gain for you. You're going to need life with this kind of a commander because you are going to be losing it quite a bit because you're just going to keep saying like, oh, I'm going to cast that, 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 and that costs life. Life is an abundant resource at Commander, but it is not, well, infinite unless you have an infinite mana, infinite mana, infinite life strategy. Soul Conduit, though. 
take advantage of actually losing that life. Pay six, tap two target players, exchange life totals. So again, you could just actually build in the entire strategy to be like, okay, I'll steal my opponent's things. I'll lose all this life. I'll go down to nearly nothing and then I'll swap. And so you actually can just go from, okay, I'm at one. You might not want to make it that risky, but sure. Go down to one. Why not? You're at one. You swap with someone else or at 40 and you're like, thank you. Now I take you out and then I do it again with that other player that's unlucky. Congratulations. Or repay in kind. I can never think of this card's name when I'm thinking about it. I know what it does. Sorcery for five black black. Each player's life total comes the lowest life total among all players. I may not say it exactly that way, but like everyone goes down to the lowest. I know that. But I can never remember the name. It's an amazing card. It's one that I could work so well with this commander where, again, your opponents are doing the right thing. And it doesn't matter because you're like, okay, yeah, you're all at 40. Good for you. All managing your life totals. I'm down to one. And you know what? Now we all are. <gasps> And I've got a 9-9 fly with lifelink. Good luck, opponents. So, yeah, there you go. Next up, Thieving Amalgam. This is a really good card for this. Commander 6-7 Ape Snake, because that's the thing that costs 7 mana in black. If you give each one's upkeep, manifest the top card player's library. Not manifest dread. Keep that in mind. Whatever creature control, but don't own dies. It's loser loses two life. You gain two life. Keep in mind, again, the theme of um, stealing your opponent's things. Cool. Have fun with that. Pricey cards to potentially consider, or if you already have the Mesmeric, or whatever a permanent becomes untapped, the player is controlling mills a card. A great way to just mill everyone throughout the game without really doing anything. You literally just throw this down. You're like, okay, I guess we're here. Okay. All right. Oh, you tap some mana. Thank you. Okay. Next turn. Mill a lot of cards for me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Also really good. Aetherflex Mesmerar. Oh my goodness. Yes. Artifact for four. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast. This turn, pay 50 life. Aether Flux Reservoir deals 50 damage to our creature or player. <sighs> yeah, this again, when you are stealing your opponent's things and you're like, okay, like I have this giant pile of cards that I can cast for just life. At a certain point, you're literally going to be either even or gaining life on cast those cards. When you've cast enough spells in a turn, you're just like, spell, 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 spell. Sure, you're losing life, but you're also gaining one life. Again, the first one's one life. You gain one life. The second one's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're going to be gaining so much life, and eventually you just be like, oh, okay, cool. I stormed off by stealing your cards, cast them for free, and then I hit you in the face for 50. How does that feel, opponents? Yay! And with that, this episode is coming to a close. As always, comment below with your thoughts on it. And of course, as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.